From Cali to Tally, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source, and this is Wake Up Warchant. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? Wake up, Warchant. As on Corey, per usual, you know how it all goes. Corey, um, you know, I feel like we should some days, we should do this show, the Monday show, which is our, our most popular show of the week, because people come to us mm-hmm. to know what happened. They want us to, to break it down, distill it, let them know what to think. We're opinion leaders, thought leaders. Right. Of course. Sometimes I just feel like we should just go ahead and record it right after the game, just when everything is raw. I feel like primal. during the game. Okay. During the game would be even better. That's the next thing. You get the whole wave of emotions. You get this whole spectrum. Yeah. Just put, like, just put a flip cam on us. Just yeah. So you can see us the whole time as we uh, go over things. Um, I don't know if I feel any differently now than I did after the whole, um, I don't want to call it debacle, but after the heartbreak, the heartbreak at Hard Rock as the uh, Irish fell so astutely mm-hmm. penned. Um, you know, I, I just don't know how to feel right now. So do you want to be the good cop or do you want to be the bad cop, Corey? I mean, I guess for your for for that uh, for that question from that perspective, I'll be the good cop because, as even it was ha- well, look, it wasn't like. First off, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, got back safely. Everything's good. Family's good. Uh, get gonna hopefully get out of town before the hurricane hits. Yeah, what's up with that? Uh, enough with the hurricanes. Am I right, Ser- FSU fans? Ser- am I right? Seriously. Um, is it named Nicosi? Is this hurricane named Nicosi? Um, anyway, I think. Um, by the way, he got rattled in that game. He wasn't great. He made some – the one throw that he made in that game, they were down 27-21 after the missed field goal. Uh, well, sorry, after the missed touchdown that was called a, a penalty. He made that throw on third and ten over the middle between two dudes. That, that was by far his best throw mm-hmm. of the night. That thing was a dime. He didn't look good really the rest of the game, but that was a great throw. Um, anyway, um, so I might say he won the game. I think, you know, now that we've had some time to decompress and kind of analyze where this team is, you know, and I wrote about it, you can't write how encouraged you are after you blow a 20-point lead to a rival on the road. And so I didn't. But now I can talk about it because I'm telling you, folks, after that Syracuse game, I was like, what what are we watching? Mm -hmm. What is this? Yep. Um, and now look, the offense wasn't much better than it was against Syracuse. It got it got robbed of a forty yard touchdown. It just did. It got robbed of a forty yard touchdown. So it should have had five scores, and it should have had thirty whatever that would have been twenty seven points because DJ had the the one touchdown on the punt return. But it had five scores and twenty seven points, and that's not bad. It's still not anywhere close to what it needs to be. It wasn't good. It had forty five yards. They can't block. The tackles can't block real well, and your quarterback doesn't feel it at all. Doesn't scoot up. Willie, Willie really seemed to be upset with him after the game. Yeah, like to the point, awkward. to the point where you start saying, "Okay, you got a bye week now, man. You were halfway through the season. Your bye week comes straight flat in the middle of the football season. You're three and three. You know what's in front of you. You know the schedule. You have what do they have? Out of the six games left, they have four ranked teams and four that are undefeated. Like uh, three that are undefeated." Clemson, Notre Dame, and NC State are all undefeated. Correct. <clears throat> and watch out. Here come the flipping Excuse Gators, me. man. Yeah, and then the Gators the only have one loss, and they're 14th Gators. in the country. So you've got a hard schedule. And through six games, the way he was talking about his quarterback after that game makes you think, okay, he might really he might really think about making a move. And, you know, I've been thinking about that a lot because I think everywhere out, the, the defense was really good. I like man, the I like the way man, they played. Really good, I, man. Good I, enough. They were good enough. They got they six enough. three and outs. They you know they were put in a position where they defense run defense was was fantastic. Also, you know Miami went for it like four or five times on fourth down. They got stops. And Mark Rick, unlike the Mark Rick that too, I knew that that was at Georgia, he was going for it on fourth down. You know twenty seven to seven, they got the stop, and then they went for it on fourth down at the three. Now, I would have liked maybe somebody else over there, or I'd like my cornerback to understand, okay, this is exactly – they're going to run the exact same play. You got beat last time. You got lucky. Be ready. So be ready. Don't don't act as if he might run a slant. He's not. He's going to run a fade. Just back up and look at the ball, jump up and knock it down if you can. Even use his shoulder pad and leap up if you have to. Right. I'm sure he would have been called. But anyway, I thought the defense played well. The special teams had moments. I thought they played with a – 
you know, this kind of fire and, and stuff that you want to see. Uh, they were into the game. Their, their offense just – the combination of the tackles not being able to block and your quarterback not doing it, just not doing it, is, is hard to overcome. But I guess to be the good cop, when you think about how listless this team was against Syracuse mm-hmm. and how they had to come from behind to beat Samford and how they really were in a close game in the fourth quarter with the Northern Illinois. They're, they're, the last three weeks, um, you know, I know what we saw with Louisville against Georgia Tech. That, that Louisville, they were down, they gave up 21 points in like in the, in the first half against Louisville. I, I wrote it, I, uh, I think I put it on the message boards. So between the, the second half of the Louisville game and the first half of the Miami game, they outscored their opponents 41 to 10. Okay, so you're starting to see it. You yeah. know what I mean? You're starting to see what it can be. There's hope. There's light at the end of the tunnel. The losses, I get it. It's debilitating. It's awful. You blew a 20-point lead. You had a chance to kind of, you know, j- just the the amount of smack you could have talked. Oh, man. All of it. But they're, you know, the use back and all that, and you blew it. Um, really, and you blew it. Like, they didn't come and take it from you. You blew it. You know, the interception's ridiculous on a number of different levels. The the sack fumble is the game. You if, see the pressure coming. And that's it, what I'm saying. You, uh, pre-snap, like you know, you know that there's coming. no way you have more than a second. It's in, and you can't just hold it and hold it and hold it. Um, yeah. So you, and, and that's I think what Willie was so upset about after the game, even more so than the uh, than the missed call on the on the touchdown, was man, he knows those turnovers cost him the game. He's got a quarterback that's played a lot of football that has to know time and score. Has to know you're up by 20 points. Has to know that that offense is doing jack piddly against your defense. You cannot give them the ball right there. If your first read is if your first read isn't there, and your second read isn't there, dude, run it. Just or throw it out of bounds. Pull it and run it. You you can't you can't sit there in the pocket as a sitting duck. And as the game get on, you know he's getting his helmet ripped off. He had another almost fumble where he was getting hit as he threw. Now I'm not blaming it all on DeAndre. I, I, we know that we know the deal with the line, but so does he, and so does Willie. And when you have a 20-point lead, you know, I don't think Willie just went out there and, and played it, you know, too careless. I mean, they, you know, they were, running, they were trying to run the ball. Third down, the pass that's intercepted is, I would imagine, one of the safest passes they have in their entire arsenal. Yeah. It is a tight end screen in the middle of the field. The tight end runs a weird wrong route, and the quarterback still throws it anyway. And now they have the ball, and they're about to score another touchdown. And then the game's, you know, it's a game again. So, but when you look, I guess, again, back to good cop. When you look at what this team is now compared to what it was three weeks ago, doesn't it give you a little bit of hope? Like, okay, they're start, we see what it can be. Oh, certainly. You, we see yeah. what it can be. There are guys that are starting to make, there are guys that are starting to make plays on both sides of the ball. And, I mean, again, I, I'm always going to go back to Syracuse as almost like a rock bottom type deal. I mean, that was that was incredible. That that's not a good Syracuse team. They just lost to Pitt. How many points they give up? Who walks in the Heinz Field though and walks? Yeah, out of the good w, point. Right? Uh, but who walks in the Carrier Dome? Yeah. Um, and I know Syracuse almost beat Clemson, but you know, to to not even show up in that game was so much 2017. All it did was remind me of 2017, except with the new offense that they couldn't adjust to. At least this team. I mean, it looked like a real football team again. It looked like a genuine football team, a well-coached football team. Again, the last 20 minutes, maybe not so much. But the first 40 minutes, they out-coached and out-played Miami. And if their quarterback doesn't turn the ball over, and it's not all on him, I get it, but if they don't have those turnovers, they win. If the referee doesn't steal, him a tu- steal away a touchdown, they win. Yeah. There's something to build on there, right? For sure. No, Compared I'm- to where it was th- – literally, man, three weeks ago, I thought they would have trouble getting to three wins. Oh, now like, you start yeah, seeing a maybe bowl game. Maybe now bowl you game start seeing a too. path where they can get to six or seven. They're gonna have to steal one of these. But I'm not. NC State's not world beaters. Yeah. They're certainly beatable. Um, you know, in I wrote about it. And again, I'm sorry, I'm taking up the whole segment. But I think what's going to be really fascinating about the the next game and the rest of the season, these six games, is how they how they handle this thing, how they handle this loss, because they've seen what they can be. Again, they went two halves where they outscored an opponent 41 to 10. Can they go out there and play? You know, there were I'm sure they were there were tears and screams and everything in that locker room. Are they going to care that much against Wake? Are they going to care that much against NC State? Are they going to play with that kind of intensity? Are they going to practice that week? Is it fair to ask that though? I mean, everybody gets up a little bit for these. But you games. Ha- at some point you have to find your level, man. You can't just and that's been the problem with this program for three years now. Sure, man, you play Miami well. 
You play Clemson well. You always ball out against Clemson, man. We get it. You always play well against Florida, but then you go and score three against Boston College, or you lose to NC State, or you lose to Louisville. When, when are you going to win? It, it, it shouldn't be about the opponent. And I, I sound like a coach. You sound it, like Jimbo. It, it sound like Jimbo. It should, it's a faceless opponent. It shouldn't be about the opponent, man. It should be about Florida State. And did you find something in that game? The pain walking off that field. Is that enough for you to be Florida State again? Or was that just a one-off? And then you're going to go back to kind of the going through the motions type program that you've been, frankly, for too long. That's what, I, that's what I'm interested in seeing. If they can come out against Wake and not only win, but play well and play hard and then carry that over, you're not going to be, I don't think you're going to win at Notre Dame. Nobody's expecting that. Nobody's expecting to beat Clemson. But can you play hard? Can you be in it? Can you give yourself a chance? That's, that's moving forward. 2018, man, we've already said it. It's, it, it is what it is. But you're building for the future. And this is really a crossroads, man. I really think that. I think where they are now, the way they just played and the, and the bitter disappointment that they had, it's a crossroads to see how they step, uh, how they rebound from it. And if they take a step forward or if they just fall on their butts again. Other places might make you wait three or four minutes to take commercial break. We'll just do like about ten seconds of it. We'll be right back after this. Wake up, War Chant. You're listening to Wake Up War Chant, all Knowles, every day. Now back to Corey and Aslan. Yeah. You don't see what I see every day as Warren G. You don't hear what I hear. All right, see? So Only about ten seconds or so. Yeah, I was, you know, that was really good stuff there, Corey, and I almost feel bad. I was, I was, almost, I was being facetious with the whole good cop, bad cop thing because I'm, <clears> I'm fine. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm totally content with how they played. Um, I'll get to that sort of point, pick up where you left off there in terms of I, I believe that we're going to start seeing now, and I think I mentioned maybe some of it last week, this, you have to start at this point of the year, week week six, you have to start seeing whatever Willie sold the team in terms of off the field stuff, in terms of the intangible. Yeah. You have to you have to play for love of one another. You have to play for each other. You have to have fun. You have to, you know, all that sort of stuff. I think we finally saw it against Miami, and, and it's probably hard to ask the team to, to play with that kind of emotion or, or to tap into that sort of element uh, against a Syracuse or, or even a Louisville on the road, although they, they probably did with the way they fought back and won that game. But I, I do think what we saw against Miami, I, I do think that, that that wasn't one of those – I don't know. I, I think like the loss against Clemson last year was that sort of last gasp, and then right. just pff, we're done. But didn't even that that felt kind of fluky to even be in that game. Yeah, weren't they down seventeen nothing at half, yeah. and then they they made a couple plays and a trick play, and all of a sudden they got the ball down by three with a chance to go in. Right, right. But I I, I think no, I, I believe I, I think that that I don't want to say the bar has been reset, but in terms of like that standard they're chasing, they're they're going to move closer to it. I don't see this team taking a step back, and. I'm, I think the bye week is perfectly timed. Yeah, win, or, win or lose, yeah. I think the bye week comes at a perfect time for them to, to kind of recalibrate things. But, no, I, I believe just the way that those players talked, it, it looked like Willie was more pained than they were, and some people might not like that. You know, Some people don't like the fact that, that Willie looks really dejected after a loss. I personally don't mind it, um, I, just him being honest. He's, he's not putting on a facade, so I, I can kind of appreciate that. But just the, I don't, just the, the demeanor of the players talking to them afterwards – I mean, I know you spoke to Marvin Wilson. He seemed a little bit more, you know. He bit, was upset, like yeah. literally upset. He didn't want to be there, which I get. Yeah. Uh, a lot of one or two word answers and just a lot of head shaking. Like he was, he was really upset. Yeah. I think the fact that they, you know, I don't know, to a man, they probably thought they it was going to be a really t- uphill battle. But the fact they got that close, I, I feel, I think Willie with the, the the buns he can push at the kids, I do feel like they're they're going to move in the right the right uh, sort of. Um, step moving forward, so I, I'm totally fine with it. I mean, again, if, if you would have told any Florida State fan, listen, the game is going to be a 28-27 game. Like, you're not going to say who's going to win or lose. If you told any Florida State fan that at 3.29 p.m. on Saturday, I think 98% of the yeah. fans would have signed up for it. Right? And then not to not to do the whole moral victory thing, but but what I liked about the game, and this is a crazy thing, too. I'm going to keep going all over the place. You're going to have to probably try to keep me in, in one lane, Corey. I was talking about it with Ira on the way back. It just... This rivalry is just, man, it just sucks to be a Florida State fan when it comes to the Miami rivalry by and large. You know, my buddy, my brother and his friend, we had like a group text, 
And my brother was so mad. It was 27 to 7. His buddy kind of texted him like, yo, we got this in the bag. And my brother was like, Jeremy just texted me, talking all this crap. And I'm like, shut up. And then my, my brother's buddy's like, yeah, dude, I can't believe it. Man, everyone needs to chill out. And I'm like, dude, relax. It's not like they're playing Tom Brady right now. Right. I, 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 at no point did I think Florida State was going to lose that game. When, when, D, when DJ Matthews scored that touchdown, I'm like, yeah. game but over. But how how, what was the only way they could lose? If they turn the ball over. And not only turn the ball over, turn the ball over at your 18. Yeah. I mean, you just – you you just it's you got to know time and score and the flow of game and those were just awful turnovers and I'm not look man I don't want to I'm not blaming a kid De, look DeAndre Francois made some great throws and I want to say this DeAndre Francois Francois in the right offense he he is a he can be a really good passer a really good passer you give him time to throw he makes the throw almost every time. He is just a – even the throw to Terry where Terry kind of – not kind of, where Terry yeah. alligator armed it, um, That's he dropped that into a bucket. That's yeah. a really good throw. It was. Um, now, he got lit up, but he put it where he had to. Your kid's got to go make a play. He can't be scared of contact. And then I liked how Terry came back after that mm-hmm. and made some, you know, big-time man catches. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I wonder – and you know how they they have wins above replacement when it comes to baseball. Right. If you, Mike Trout versus a regular player, he's worth seven or eight wins a game a year um, because he's that much better than the normal player. If you had a quarterback that was used to this system, that had run this system, that had played this system, that knows the reads well, yeah. even if he's not a great athlete, but he knows the reads. If they have like Quentin Flowers, they're they're four and one right now, or I mean well, five and one five, right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So. What's the wins above replacement for DeAndre? Yards above replacement. If you right. like, how many yards is is DeAndre costing them? With simple like math, as far as like, okay, I got to pull it and I got to pull it and run this. Mm. I got to throw this out wide. I got to get like just counting the numbers. I would love to know, like, actually talk to Willie off the record, and I wouldn't if I did. Obviously, I wouldn't bring it up here because it's off the record. But how many yards are being left out there because the quarterback still just isn't comfortable with it? What is this offense going to look like with a quarterback that can run it? Right. Or a quarterback that will run? I don't think James Blackman's that it, it either. I know. That's, that's the, the issue. And yeah. that's the issue. And that's when you look at – look at um, when the, you look what at this – What I don't this, get is he's, he's a smart kid, man. He, he knows football, DeAndre. Oh, for sure. And yeah. I, I just And this is supposed to be a, a, a simple offense, like not making them think a lot. Where is the disconnect? Is I it think a me- health maybe, mental thing? Just, I think there's some of that, but I think it's also like it's not just every play. I mean, you know, usually when DeAndre was calling a running – when there was a running play for Jimbo, most a lot of the time it was just, hey, it's a running play, man. You can check the one line or one side or the other, but it's a running play. Now he's having to decide if it's a run or a pass. Like, he, it's all on him. Yeah. And I wonder if there's a way, man. I, I just think, <clears throat> you know, they look to the sideline. They get the defensive set and then look to the sideline. Maybe they could tell him, no, on this one, run it yeah. or keep it or throw it. You know, I, I just – I wonder how if they can help him along because, you know, I, I, I do think the, the, the team took a step. I think the program is in a better place, obviously, than it was three weeks ago. Absolutely. I think it's probably in a better place than it was nine months ago. I just do, or twelve months ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. I but if you ha- if you can't do anything on offense consistently, then what's the ceiling? Where are you going to go? And and what I why I bring that up is, you know, you look at this defensive line. I don't know if Burns is leaving, but Marvin Wilson's an animal. Mm-hmm. He's great. Uh, Shout out Fred Jones too. He played his he balls played really off, well. Man. <clears throat> so you look at this defense. They don't. They just. They're a really young football team. Really young. I, I guess you could think that maybe you're losing Burns and Levanta. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess. Um, I, just the way Florida State's history is, if they're going to be they middle mid round picks, these guys. And... Um, but it's a young football team, and it's really young on the offensive side. So you don't lose anyone, but Nyquan and Patrick. Um, but if your quarterback doesn't get it now, is he going to get it next year? And is it going to look more like this? Is he because I guess my my concern is moving forward. Does he look any more comfortable running it than he did three weeks ago? Has is he made strides? No, I'm asking yeah. you. Does that's where that's where my concern look, is? Is he growing? Do you look any more comfortable in the first half versus the second half? I mean, I know he performed better in the first half, but it wasn't like he he was making just playing crazy above his head the first half. I mean, he, he seemed to have the same quality of or lack thereof no. of a run game and an offensive line play was up and down the entire game. It was consistent, but it just seems like, 
I don't know. I don't know what adjustments Miami made or maybe Florida State didn't make, but he just <clears throat> he didn't have the the same sort of punch. So yeah, I just wonder about the future. If and again, I think DeAndre, DeAndre Francois is a great throw of the football. Maybe that's too strong. No. Very good. Good Spins to very it, man. good. Spin it. Um, made some, the throw to Gavin is incredible. That's yeah. a great throw. Great catch by him too to get in the end zone. Terry with the great with the great catch to snatch that thing and go up and get it. He made some big time throws. Just a couple of costly turnovers. And I think what really bothers Willie is I think the reason that one of the reasons they chose Francois is because they they thought he wouldn't. Yeah. He didn't. He, he wouldn't make those clit- turnovers. He made less critical errors than what they said yeah. when they made. The he decision. wouldn't make those turnovers, and in that situation, the one thing your quarterback can't do is give the other team the ball at your 18 yard line, and he did it twice and got them right back in the game. I mean, that place was dead. I mean, people that weren't there, the oh. the crowd was booing. The crowd was throwing stuff on the field. I mean, it was done. If Florida State just drives the ball a little bit after being up 27 to 7 making them punt. I mean they yeah, just, just get two first downs, a first down or two. They then... ran the ball at midfield on third and 16. They ran the ball and got 4 yards and punted. It was almost as if they were giving up. Mm-hmm. And then you give them you give them life. You give them life. They don't take it from you. You give them life by not feeling that pressure and just sitting there as a sitting duck and then you know of course they're not going to recover a fumble because when does this team ever recover a fumble so uh, so you know I think that's what was why Willie was so upset is his redshirt junior quarterback who's played some football and is supposed to be the safe guy the guy that doesn't make the critical mistakes made two huge ones that gave them that game and also I think what else should be number one this should be encouraging for Florida State and also really discouraging if you have a issue with officials, is even after they took the they, they got it to 27-21 and all the momentum was against Florida State, the Knolls are starting to mount a nice little drive. They, I, think, I can't remember if they went right back down the field or if they punted and got the ball back. I think Miami punted. And then Florida State got the ball back and, and got a couple first downs. And then you, you set up a perfect call. You throw a screen to DJ who gets you about five or six yards on the first play. He run and then you go you go you go hurry. He goes to the other side of the field. You do the exact same play. The dude's open by thirty yards, yep. and they take it from you. If you score there, there's whatever there is eleven or twelve minutes left. You're up by two touchdowns, and you've stemmed the tide. You've stemmed the momentum. You you did what you had to do, even after you got them back in the game to go up by two scores again, and it was kind of taken away from you. And I you know I called the ACC. Talked to someone off the record, but not someone that would know. I didn't talk to, like, the head of officials or anything. I'm hoping I can get them um, to, on Monday. See if they come on the show. Yeah, but, you know, you, you can't look at that play and say that was a forward pass. There is no view of, of that play that I've seen where you can say it was a forward pass. But the, it was ruled in a forward it pass. It was ruled a forward pass, and, and they did not review it. Now, they did have about 80 or 90 seconds because of the – they, it took them a while to administer it because yeah. Florida State was celebrating a touchdown. They had to they had to announce it. Everybody yeah. had to come back on the field. So it wasn't like the Virginia Tech game where he where he should have called a timeout to get it challenged. Um, also, don't jump when you got first and goal at the one right. guys. Don't jump. Uh, what are you in a hurry for? He's not anyway. That's the, you know you talk about a play that kind of sabotaged a, a season almost. I mean you're I mean that was just an awful that was an awful scenario, but. So they had plenty of time to look at it, and people want Willie to go crazy or call a timeout. And I mean, they had 70 seconds to look at it. They saw multiple angles. I don't know what else he's supposed to do. He could, he could take like the yard marker and fling it into the field. Yeah, I was saying he needs to be like <clears throat> a minor league. He needs to be like a minor league baseball manager and just throw like an absolute temper tantrum. But does that stop. get them? Does that yeah. make them I don't reverse know. it? Yeah, I don't know how how it all <clears throat> works. Like we were talking about in the elevator, it's believed that. You know, when something borderline happens, that they're going to look at it upstairs, no they matter always what. Always do. No, I think they did look at it. But what what do you do when the person that's looking at the replay apparently is? I, I don't know what he was doing. Was like, he was he on the phone? Was he playing Angry Birds? Was he was he messaging someone? Like, what was he looking at to look at that play and say, "Wait, wait, wait"? Not let close me, enough. Is let what let said, me right? uh, let me. Well, because that, that's the natural rule. Like you say, hey man, can we review it? He's like, well, he'd buzz down if it was close. It obviously wasn't close. The head official did never see a replay. Yeah. He's just assuming, okay, they'll buzz down if it's any because they buzzed down six times in that game for targeting for four yard catches on the sideline. Yeah. One that I didn't think they got right anyway uh, for balls hitting the ground. They they buzzed down for all of it, but for that one they didn't. 
And I, I just, it boggles the mind. It just boggles the mind looking at that live. And then when you have 80 seconds after they've already celebrated the touchdown to look at that replay and go, no, nope, I don't need to, I don't need to, I don't need to buzz down and look at this more right. closely. Is any of it the fact that they actually do throw a flag? So then you can argue that the defense sees a flag is thrown. They're going to play differently. Or, I mean, I, I don't I mean, know. I mean, he was open by 30 yards. He I, was. They, and that flag was just dropped. Like it yeah. wasn't like they, he flung it up in the air. It was just dropped beside him. Right. So no, I, I just think it was a, it was a great play call. It was a great play call. But again, like so, so the, to your point, like why not just call a timeout then? Just call a timeout. I mean, what's you lose a timeout, you lose a timeout. I don't know. I mean, they're telling you they're not challenging it. But if you call a timeout, does that at least give you a twenty second un- uninterrupted platform to be like, you know, dude, can you buzz up to them? I mean, I don't know. Maybe you stall but even more. Can you more do than- that? I don't know the the machinations of how that works. He, it, you can't it's, challenge. It's, re- it's it. reviewable. He can't challenge it. But at least, I mean, can't you delay? I mean, by calling another timeout, does that maybe not? Are they not going? Will they not be looking at it for during the, that that duration of time upstairs? That'd be kind of good question to ask them and find out. I would imagine they're not just going to be like, "That's it, fine, we're done." You know, we're just going to sit around here on our hands for the two minutes of the of the timeout. But, we're not going to look at it anymore. But that, what's odd about that is again, it wasn't the Virginia Tech game. It was. So he scored a touchdown. Everybody celebrated. Yeah. He calls the flag. They yeah. have to come back. I mean, it, literally, if I if we timed it, I bet it was like seventy five or eighty seconds in between plays. So what was the dude doing? Like, what would another timeout? What would a timeout do? Maybe Give him an extra thirty yeah. seconds. Like, I don't, I don't. And in that spot, they're not. I don't think they're doing a, a TV timeout. I think it's going to be a thirty second this deal because they were trying to make up time. Right. So you're adding an extra thirty seconds, and it it shouldn't be on you. Right. In the grand scheme of things, it shouldn't be on you to call a timeout, man. You, you got a dude sitting there getting paid to look at that TV and to say, oh, that looked like that. Ooh, that might have been – that's a lot closer than we think. Let me buzz down and take a good look at this. That's what his job is. Why does he need the head coach down there that's got all this other stuff going on that's being told by the official, no, man, they'll, they'll buzz down. They're looking at it. What is that guy doing? What was the guy doing for Virginia Tech? How do you not look at that play and say, hey, man – that could have been a fumble, or it might have been a touchdown. I got to buzz down there and stop this. They and the reason I get so frustrated by it, the reason I'm so you can hear the anger in my voice right now is because they buzz down for everything, right. literally everything they buzz down. But this one, no. Well, the targeting they have to review. All targeting calls are a catch where the ball still, bounces, yeah. just everything. The the Francois fumble, I get it. They reversed it. But they buzzed that. They must have had six or seven times in that game where they they reviewed it, and they've had other times where it's obviously a fumble in other games where they review it anyway. Where the previous play is under review, and then they'll go and talk for nine seconds and come back out. It boggles the mind that that dude up there is twiddling his thumbs, twiddling his <laughs> thumbs, not not asking for a review, not buzzing down to say, "Hey, the game kind of is on the line here. Maybe I should look at it." That said, don't fumble and throw an interception twice in your own ends, in your own side of the field, and it wouldn't have come down to that play anyway. Yeah, that was uh, that was a tough one, man. That's a tough one. I wonder if. But you said you're encouraged. I, I am encouraged. I'll talk more about it. We'll wrap things up after this. Let's wake up, board champ. Prime time in football paradise on November 9th, Florida State travels to South Bend, Indiana, to take on Notre Dame. Make the trip and take the stress of planning off the table with a package from Game Day Excursions. From a yacht party through downtown Chicago to a pregame tailgate or transportation from Chi-Town to Notre Dame Stadium, Game Day Excursions has you covered. Head to gamedayexcursions.com to book your trip and be sure to use the promo code WARCHANT for a $10 discount. Check out gamedayexcursions.com. I'm alright, alright. Yeah, just watching, just walking up to that stadium, getting rained on in the pregame a little bit. By the way, shout out to to Marlon, Pete, some of the guys that were you know tweeting at us, calling into the show, wanting to grab beers. I, I, I gave us bad directions. We kind of got to the stadium a little bit late. We couldn't you know dabble with the people, oh, and revel right, with you all right. the tailgating. Plus, I don't know. I might have to. I might have to alter my whole Miami fan versus Florida fan sort of uh, power hate ranking. They're oh, because you've, ex- you've experienced it no, now. I, oh, I had. No, I had yeah. before. I mean, in college and everything. They're but just, that was a long time ago. It had been a minute. Yeah. Um, they're just a different bunch. This is the thing that I will say. Like, Miami fans will probably like, want to fight you and, and, and get crazy. 
But, like, they wouldn't call the cops afterwards. Like, Florida people would. And they'd be like, this man accosted me. And yeah. I want you to – like, the Miami fans would just be like, you. Yeah, that's like just the price of doing home. business in Miami, yeah. man. They know the deal. Yeah. Sometimes they're going to kick a guy's ass. Sometimes they'll get their, their ass kicked. Yeah. It's fine. They'll go to the – they'll go get a beer afterwards. Yeah, but um, I, just, I just felt so bad for the Florida State fans that had the balls to show up to that game because, you know, pregame – you know, Cole Minshew's running back and forth, like warming up, and the, these two like, hecklers, if we're going to call Miami fans, there's a video of it up on YouTube, uh, even on the the War Chant Twitter account. Uh, the one guy's like, 70, you suck. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna let three sacks a day. You're you're gonna get three sacks a day." And then Nyquan looks at the guy's like, "Man, you're gonna be gone in the third quarter, man. He's like, you're gonna be gone in the third quarter." I'm like, "Bold." He was bold close, and he was damn close. I felt so bad about that game. My brother and his brother are like, "What do you feel like?" I'm like, "Dude, it's." It's gloomy out right now. I'm like, I just don't have a good feeling about this game. And for them to, to turn it on the way they did and play so hard for – I mean, they played hard the entire game, but to, to like jump out 27-7 to on that, that DJ play, um, again, like they started throwing stuff. I mean, they were they were throwing beer balls from the top deck, and they, they were – Hitting they, their own fans. They knew yeah. it. They didn't care. And they yeah. were, they, it was just – they were a complete mess. And I'm like, imagine if you're a Florida State fan and you're in this right now. Just the absolute joy. Right. And just, you know, just – oh. Just has to be fantastic. Those are the best. The best wins are not against rivals. It's against rivals in their in their stadium. Like I was there in 2003 when we beat Florida. Ricks the Sam. Oh, unbe- oh course, unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable, best feeling ever. And, and then to, to to not have that, and then also live, and then and and to drive into work this morning and know you got that freaking Miami fan in your office. If you live in Fort Lauderdale, if you live in Hallandale Beach, or if you live anywhere down South Florida, like you had it. Um, I, I, my heart goes out to, to those fans, but um. Shout out, though. Keep fighting the good fight, everybody. But to, to the encouraging thing. So I think I tweeted before the fourth quarter. I'm like, I think, you know, Florida State can just get some points in the fourth quarter and not turn the ball over. I think they can win the game. That would have helped. Uh, they didn't get any points. Now, did they turn over the ball in the fourth? I don't think they turned. No, they, they almost had the one, yeah, but it was, it was ruled back. But ultimately, this is what it comes down to for me. Nobody had any expectation, really, except for the most blindly loyal Florida State fan that Florida State was going to win that game. The fact that he came out and played that hard and played that well for that long is extremely encouraging. And then for me, it's looking If they at, build on it, right? Yes, that's the caveat. Which I think they are. Yeah. I, I don't see them turning back. I do back. too, weirdly. I, I do too. I think that's why I'm more encouraged. I thought last year when they lost that Miami game, a similar kind of way, heartbreaking at the end, I had a feeling that was going to spiral that team. Yeah. I felt like they didn't have anything to play for. They were number three in the country, and that was their third loss. And it was just such a ridiculous way to lose. Um, I, I think that kind of took the life out of them. I think this team. I think this showed I, I feel them like more it could than give the Louisville them life. game. I think it yeah. could give them life. I think the way they played in that game, in that environment, to feel like they were unlucky to lose. Not that they, you know, I, I wouldn't say they melt. The defense certainly didn't melt down. Yeah. They, you know, you gotta you gotta compete better on one on one balls. You gotta quit getting per, pass interference calls. Um, but I, I just thought that they they competed, man. They competed at that level, and they took the will of that team. That team was done. Until you gave it back to them, you would you would taken it from them. That's something to build on. I know how it ended up, but I'm not. You know what, folks? Here's the thing about Corey Clark. I'm not a results oriented person. I'm a process guy, and this is part of the process, guys. You know, results. Yeah, sure. Somebody had more points than the other team by a point, but the process of what we're trying to build here in Tallahassee at Florida State. That I think that I think that was another. I think that could have been another step. I really do. If they use it the right way, which I, I do I, for some reason. And I, I could be wrong. Lord knows I've been wrong once or twice in my life. Once. Once, at least. But, uh, you know, I, I think they can – if they can build on that, I think this team is better equipped to m- take this as a positive. And I also think it helps that they have a bye week yeah. to get over it and then to get excited to play again. But the way I look at it is, you know, everybody you – know, the whole, you know, somebody called in on, on the phone call Friday, by the way, do so again. Actually, I don't, we might not have a show this Friday. It's a bye week. We might get hit by a hurricane. We might not. Who knows how things are going to go. But 850-792-5730. You can always give us a call, 850-792-5730. But someone asked, you know, what do you think about Willie? What do you think about this coaching staff? And it's, it's so hard to say, right? I mean, through six weeks, the whole fire Willie or, you know – it's going to be. He's going to win national titles. Just give him time. It's just, just way too early. Yeah, on you each. can't. Yeah, you can't course. pick that sort of stuff. I think the. By the way, real quick, I think the people that were all out on him. Yeah. I would hope that what they've seen the last three weeks would make them kind of check themselves a little bit. Like, 
I get where you were after the Syracuse. Well, not I don't get that people are saying he should be fired, but I get where you're thinking this is hopeless and lost. Anger is a natural res- uh, But after what you've that. seen these three weeks, they've been a better team each of the last three weeks. You can see that it's starting to grow a little bit. Yeah. So, so what I'm th- the whole time I'm thinking about this, and obviously it's it's never a good thing when you're playing your rival, you're up by 20 points, and then you lose the game, and you don't score anything in the fourth quarter. I right. mean, offensively, they didn't do anything in the second half, period. But what I look at it is we were never going to really find out about Willie because my whole thing is he's going to get talent. He's going to recruit really well, and by virtue of that, he's going to be able to win a lot of games in the ACC just because he's going to have better talent than most of the teams that he plays. But can you can you call a good can you call a good game when you're equally matched or when the other team is going to really scheme up and they got a bye week and they're putting all their chips in that game? And, and you know, like the, like the Louisville game in, in 16, right? Like they had a bunch of scrubs before they played Florida State. They even said so much that they, they worked the entire preseason pretty much on the Florida State game, so they were ready for that. Like at that point, can, can Willie out-scheme, match wits with coaches and, and, and find ways to win? Because I was such, such a huge fan of the way I thought Jimbo – uh, was tac- uh, as a tactician in terms of like what he did in the national championship game. That just bought so much equity with me. Again, that play call was so well designed, was pretty damn well executed, and it was called at such an excellent that, time of the uh, game. Perfect like, time. To see it him do that, perfectly. to see them call that play, to have the balls to call that play, and then it worked. I mean, it, it, it freaking should have worked by all indications. Like That to me is, is highly encouraging because if they get that, they, they probably win the game. I mean, I don't know what sort of percentage you want to put on. I wonder what the uh, the ESPN probability index would look like if they would have got that. I'm all, you know, I mean, they get that, then golly, no, who knows what happens. But to, to emotionally get that team up and ready for that game, to understand what that rivalry means, to get them to play that hard, to, to, to you know, we saw we saw growth in terms of they went tempo a lot. And I know we were kind of quibbling about it up in the press box, like, you know, they, they should maybe slow it down. They're only getting three yards after, you know, they'll, they'll get four yards on first down. They'll hurry up and they'll get a three-yard completion or they'll, they'll get a first down on, on, on a third down. But the right. first, they're, they're going really fast. And sometimes you're like, why are they going fast? You know, just figure out what you want to run and run it well. But they were running tempo. They were running different sets. There wasn't any of those sort of pre-snap procedural penalties. So you, you got a good eye. You, I mean, everything they ran, the, the interception that he threw in the, in the in the second half, they would have gotten a first down on it. It was third and a mile. No, oh, they would have gotten 30 or 40 yards. If he gets the ball to McKitty, it's a, like, that's a great play call. It's well designed. It was set up. He ran the same play earlier in the game and still went back to it. Like, these are the sort of things that it's hard to appreciate Saturday at 9.32 p.m. when some jerk-off from freaking Hialeah, I shot them out last week. There's good people out there, but the Miami fans, when the Miami fans are up, you know, are, are tweeting at you and talking smack to you in Hard Rock Stadium, it's hard to be like, I really like Willie Taggart. But I'm telling you, and again, as the skeptical guy of the show, by and large, there is so much to appreciate from that game. I think just in terms of, okay, he's cap. I mean, I, I, it's hard to, to if you want to be like, I don't. For Virginia Tech, you're like, oh, there's no way he's ever going to figure it out. I don't know. To, to say that would be extremely unfair. But I think seeing six games worth, seeing the progress, and then in that sort of setting against Miami, where that was everything to win for Florida. They had everything on the line for him to call what I thought was a really good game. Um, I, I am encouraged by it, man. I, I feel good about it. It sucks. I mean, it sucks to lose to Miami. It sucks to blow a 20-point lead to anybody, let alone those freaking guys in their house. But at the end of the day, I, just, I, I do feel that he has – he, he's shown the ability in a big time game to to make enough play calls to win the game, for sure. And I think when you go back to what you know, he talked about it um, after the game. He said, you know, we know these guys can play. This was the exact quote: "We know these guys can play football. We've get it. We've got to teach them how to win again." Yeah. And that's a pretty telling quote. Um, and look, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. That's coming from a guy that has a below five hundred record as a coach. He doesn't know quite how to win at this level yet either. I, I, I'm i not saying he can't, but he hasn't done it either. But he's turned around the culture. So no, yeah. This no, is, and that, that wasn't a right shot. Now. I'm just saying yeah. people might say to themselves, well, he's, what, is he just blaming the kids? Like, yeah. he needs to do some things too. Yeah. But when you talk about little things, so McKinney doesn't run the right route there. If he if he flattens it out and goes horizontal instead of some reason vertical and stop, if he goes horizontal, the linebacker's not cutting in front of him. He's going to catch it on the run. He has to make that linebacker miss, but we assume he will. And literally, there's nobody on that side of the field. He's running for 30 or 40 yards. But So that's a little thing. It is. So is even on the pass that, that should have counted. Why aren't you throwing it two yards back? Why, are you, why aren't you making it completely obvious? 
the safety doesn't the safety can't tell if it's a backward pass from 30 yards deep. He's charging forward as soon as he sees the throw, whether it's six yards behind the line of scrimmage or right on the line of scrimmage. He's charging forward. You don't have to make it that close. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You don't have the, to make it. That's not part of the key. You don't think making it that much of a lateral. I mean, and then the, the, the sideline, as soon as you make it a backward pass, that obvious. They're yelling, pass, yeah. pass, and then you're so, start dropping but back it, and bailing. It, it can be a half a yard or a yard right. or a yard and a half. It was right down the line, and I still think it was backwards. And if it wasn't backwards, it was literally sideways. It was like not a, forward It's like a all. fight or knock them out. Don't make it go to the judges. Yeah, don't so, make it that close. So don't make it close enough where they can do that. And so, again, that's a little thing. It's just a little detail. It's a little detail that great teams don't do. They just don't. Um, and it's stuff they got to learn. It's just stuff you, you've, you've got to learn. But you're right, man. That play call, like when you think about Jimbo's play calls over the last eight years here, how many can you remember that were just off the top of your head were just incredible play calls, just great well, the Clemson game last year, that trick play was pretty darn solid. Sure, but that was really. also kind of desperation, I thought. And it, it was great. And it was yeah. also because he never did it ever. He never yeah. did anything like that. Well, the, fake punt, national championship. Game. Yeah, that's that comes to mind immediately. Um, and there's there's a few more like that. But, you know, it's it's stuff like that that, that you know, it, it's a play call like that where you're like, man, that could have been one that we'd have talked about for a decade. Yeah. It's, well, it still will be as it turns out because of how it ended up affecting the game. But it was such a great play call. Mm -hmm. It's such a perfect moment that, okay, well, to me anyway, the moment wasn't too big for Willie Taggart. Agreed. You know what I mean? In that moment, in that stage, he made the – he he knew what he was doing when he called the pass to DJ the the play before. Yeah. It set it up perfectly. I don't think we'd ever – I don't think we'd seen that play this year. Um, And it was – especially not from DJ – it was just everything about it was perfect, and it was at the perfect time to stem the tide to make sure that uh, that you had a, you got a two score lead again, and maybe that they quit after that, maybe not. I mean, it's Florida State, Miami. They might have come back and won thirty five, thirty three, or thirty five, thirty four, whatever. But that know, was in the fourth quarter, though, right? That, that, that yeah, but there was eleven minutes left, so there was still time for them to get the ball back a couple of times, especially as fast as but that Willie just, goes. I mean, to I mean, it's a backbreaker. In that, in that it's, fashion, a, it's a backbreaker, yeah. and they had only really had one touchdown. Both of their real touchdown drives, I think, anyway, they they converted fourth downs. I mean, the Florida State defense did everything right. I mean, I think Florida Miami was five of eighteen on third downs. Sounds about right. Florida State was six of eighteen. Florida State had thirteen tackles for loss. Miami had twelve. I mean, it was a really even game. I mean, it really was. Like, Florida State went on their run. They had a 20-point run. Well, they're not 20 points better than Miami. They just played those situations better, and then Miami turned around and had a 21-point run. They're a very even football team. Um, Florida State played the situations better the first two quarters, two and a half quarters. Miami played better the last quarter and a half. But it's there. It's all right there, and I thought, you know, as it was falling apart, as it seemed to fall apart, your head coach dialed up the perfect play. The perfect play that would have iced it, could have iced the game, and it was taken away from them. But I think Florida State fans, I know you're upset. I know you're, you might still be upset two days later. You might still be drunk. Um, but I think you can take some solace there, man, that he didn't, he didn't melt. He didn't, he didn't go into a, a fetal position. Yeah. He called a terrific play at the exact right time that worked to perfection. They haven't had, Florida State hasn't had a guy that open in – 25 years. I mean, the dude was just – he could have caught it like a – I think he did catch it like a punt. He just had his back to the end zone yeah. catch. I mean, there was nobody there. There was nobody on the screen. It was a perfect play call. And you hope that gives Florida State fans some solace about what this guy is doing. That said, man, if the quarterback – how many yards is that – how many yards are they leaving out there because the quarterback doesn't run it correctly? Right. Doesn't run it right. I mean, and the running backs aren't look. I mean, well, I will say about, this though: you the little things, like you know, there was a first down. Cam gets like eight, eight yards, yards on first down, and then down, they punt. And then, like, how do you not get? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's a little things you talk about playing winning football that you have to figure out a and way. They to. end up punting. I will say this: I, I will admit I was I was wrong. Um, I think I mean you can look it up. I think the running backs averaged maybe four yards a carry, four and a half yards a carry in that game. They didn't run the ball. They you know they didn't have any great rushing yards because of Francois sacks. But, I mean, I feel like, you know, with – I mean, Rasul had the one carry, but uh, uh, Patrick and, and Akers, I thought, ran well at times. I thought in the second half of that game, I thought Akers looked a little bit more like the real Akers where yeah. it looked like, okay, he's about to bust one. I, like he had the look of a guy that was about to bust one and he just would get tackled. But he looked like he was about to bust one. We haven't really seen that guy kind of all season. 
So what did the running backs get? Cam averaged four point two. Uh, Jock had three point one. So what? But in Rasul, and Rasul ran so what one was for the, six yards? So what was the total for, uh, for those three? Uh, eighty three because Francois had minus thirteen. They so eighty three on how many carries? Thirty two. No, the running backs had thirty two for eighty three. That is. I'm sorry because Francois had eleven. They had. I'm sorry, twenty two. 22, 22 for 83. 22 for 83. Okay, that's a lot better yeah, than I thought yards, they would do. It's about four yards, yards to carry. Which is still not where you want to be, but it's much more. And quite frankly, I thought that he probably should have stayed with it a little bit more. And that's what I was going to say about the Mia Culpa. Like, um, going into that game, I was like, man, you need to throw it 70 times. That's the only way you can move the ball against this team is to throw the ball. But in reality, they ran it not terribly. Yeah. You know, they had a few tackles. for. They had a few of those head scratchers that you're always going to see. And, yeah, I, I, that, that one series really sticks out where Cam got seven or eight on first down. And then, man, you gotta, you got to find a way to get a first down there. you got to. you just got to. You, if it, whether it's the quarterback pulling it or you just running harder, get in there and find a way to get a first down. But overall, I thought after that, and I don't know if he got his ass chewed or what when he backed to the sidelines, but I thought the next two or three carries, he looked like the guy that could bust it at any time. Like he was running with a renewed vigor. Um, but, you know, he's just not getting anything out of his running game. And it's hard to judge this dude and what this offense is when the running game is 125th or 128th or whatever it is in the country. If it can get – imagine what what would this record – what would this team's record be if it was top 20 in the nation in rushing, like his team has been each of the last three years? Would they be 5-1? and one? Maybe 6-0? and oh? I mean, you know what I mean? Like the running game is everything. And they can't imagine that game Saturday if you had an actual legitimate rushing attack where you just pounded the um, pounded them and and uh, c- consistently spit out first downs and ran the clock. I mean, you win that game. Uh, you can't put it all on the quarterback, and that's how they move the ball. That's how they score touchdowns. Is that they have? I think they have eleven. What do they have? Thirteen, fifteen touchdowns now offensively, and eleven of them are through the air. That's how they score, man. Five of them to Maury and Terry. My man. I'll y'all be honest doubted, with you. I'll doubt him after that that one drop. We were all doubting him after that. Man. I didn't. You, you, I stand, it's Florida State I Miami, my I man. I wasn't happy, but I, I didn't. I didn't dog my guy. It was Florida State Miami, buddy. You got to go make that play. Um, and it, but he came back. He came back with a vengeance and made two really. He made that really nice play before the Aguayo kick before the uh, before the half. So, and one last thing is like Mark Richt. Um, you know, trust me, I watched him for 15 years at Georgia. He went for it on fourth down. I think four times, five times. What is, what was it? Uh, Fourth down plays four. They were three of four on fourth down. Okay, Miami. so two of those were touchdowns. Right. Like, and they it wasn't like fourth and an inch. They weren't automatic gimmies. We got to go for it here, but he went for it. So two on two of those fourth downs, they got um they got tu- they got touchdowns, and the other fourth down they got was uh ended up running out the clock, extending the game, uh, running out the clock. The one they missed set up Florida State to get that field goal before the half. Right. But that's the risk versus reward, man. And I like. Coaches need to do more of that, man. I was really surprised that he was doing that, but he did. He had a – you know, I think that's, that's a message that it sends to your team. And what – you're down 27 – like, I wonder, Jimbo Fisher, if he's down 27-7 to 7 with eight minutes to go in the third quarter and it's fourth and three, is he kicking a field goal? Yeah. I think so, right? Yeah. And if Mark Rick kicks a field goal, that's a wrap. Ball game's over. You're still up by 17, you're getting the ball back. He didn't. He just threw it up again. He lobbed it up to a six seven kid, um, which when you have a six seven kid, maybe it's easier to go for it on fourth down. But it's a lot of stuff to talk about that game, man. It was it was an odd thing. It was weird to write about because it was such a disappointing loss. Because it, you know why it was such a disappointing loss is because it would have been such a wonderful win. Yeah. Like uh, you know you lose to Miami, all right, big deal. But uh, you're well, not. They, I mean, they, like you're they, not winning a championship yeah. this year. I guess everybody braced to lose that game. Yeah. So and what a wonderful you were, you were up by uplift. 20. What an uplifting feeling that would have been to actually steal that one to win. So that's why I think that's what makes it so disappointing is because it would have been such a wonderful, you know, you know, tenure defining win maybe or turnaround win, and instead, yeah, they found a way to lose it. But you know what? Maybe they build something off it. Maybe they build something off it. Plus. I think basketball season starts in about three weeks. Stop it. Got a big recruit. Got Stop a big recruit it. this weekend. It's yeah. big news for the Knowles basketball team. Top 30 recruit. Yeah. Just got to beat Florida now. I mean, now everything ratchets up. Now you got you got to beat them. And golly, I hope they got more than five wins going to that game. A lot of pressure. Going to be a lot of pressure on that <sighs> on that, on that that game if they don't. Um, I mean, they're not any good, are they? I mean, uh, who they is? They keep winning. Like, who is good? Yeah. Really? Alabama. 
In terms, uh, of, they are good. Yeah, I think Alabama and Georgia, the way they play, I think Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame's not squeaking by teams. Yeah. Um, maybe the yeah, Virginia Michigan guys game. are backup quarterback. No, around. but I mean they they still the offense like Notre yeah. Dame's offense is traveling. They're doing well. That kid has turned them around. So I think those three teams, they they don't they don't mess around. Like Alabama, Georgia, Notre Dame aren't messing around. Whether it's on the road or at home, they're scoring a lot of points and they're winning comfortably. Other than that, man, what's the difference between Mississippi State, Auburn, LSU, Florida, LSU, yeah. Kentucky, Texas A and M, Miami, Florida State? They're all, State, they're all they're right. all they're all interchangeable. Yeah. You just you know there's a lot the, the parodies when Florida State's kind of mediocre, which obviously they are right now. The the ACC is ugh, it's rough. <laughs> yeah, it's like 2008 AS, ACC again. All right, let's uh, let's go out there talk to Willie, uh, see how he feels, um, what he thought about the game, and uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. We'll keep you updated on uh, the plans for the rest of the week. Uh, have a great Monday, everybody. Thanks for listening. He's Coram Aslan. It's been Wake Up War Chant. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.